It's been a really busy couple of weeks for me once again. Last weekend I was setting up an outdoor lighting installation for an art festival. So that kind of killed all my available time that week. But I have had a little bit of time and I've been working on some of the power systems, the Rover, which I'm just going to go over now. The Rover here runs on a 24 volt supply. The 24 volts is supplied, supplied by the two lithium ion or kind of however many I want lithium ion battery packs. And that 24 volts is for the drive motors, that's what they're rated at. And so that setup works quite well, but there are two other voltages used within the Rover. 5 volts, which is the kind of a real kind of electronic control systems, and so that's the Arduino based control system, the stop switch, etc. And 12 volts, which will be used for, uh, I think, some of the kind of sensor based systems, new sensors I'm going to try and fit to this thing. And so I've originally toyed with the idea of generating 5 volts centrally, feeding it out to whatever needed it. But um, I think what I'm going to do is settle on generating 12 volts centrally, feeding that out, and then if something needs 5 volts, it can generate that 5 volts locally. So for example, the OLED screen on the control box here has a 5 volt regulator built in, generate its own power. And so with that in mind, I fitted a really cheap, but hopefully quite effective, a 12 to, or 24 to 12 volt power converter. Yeah, so just bolted on the side, this is a really cheap one, I think designed for uh, trucks, kind of convert their voltage down. That takes a, one of the 24 volt feeds and generates 12 out. And so at the moment, I've got that feeding out to the electronic system here, which has its own built-in regulator to produce 5 volts. That 5 volts is used internally and then also pushes out to the stop switch. And so I think that's working or should work quite well. What I've got left to do is improve some of the connections and fittings in here just to make it a little bit more robust. In addition to the power systems, I've also managed to get the GPS and compass fitted. And so that is this uh, unit up here. That is attached to the framework using a 3D printed bracket. And so the bracket I've come up with is just a really, really straightforward thing. It just kind of clamps around the, um, the upright of the metalwork and provides a rigid kind of square platform for the GPS to sit onto and that is then stuck down with adhesive. Annoyingly, it took um, quite a few attempts to get this right. Every time I uh, kind of came up with a stand when I was printing one of these, I'd have a dodgy layer in the support and the whole thing would just be kind of weak and brittle. And so after quite a few attempts, I ended up with one good print, which I've attached on like so. And so far that is working really well. So for this week, I think that's the update done. I've got the power system in place, which I'm really pleased about. That's one of those decisions that I was kind of humming and ahhing over, and that is now sorted. Um, the GPS and compass is mounted. I'm still looking forward to getting it outside to test that though. Um, so for these updates, I think that's kind of it for now. Um, the next bit really is the LiDAR kind of scanner array. This is um, the kind of sweeping kind of scanning sensor array to make to the, the obstacle avoidance system. The part I'm after for that doesn't get released until the end of the month, another couple of weeks. And so what I think I'm going to do is probably put this project on hold for a few weeks and pick it up again when the sensor arrives. Um, it's possible I may jump in sooner if I find something else that needs to be fixed. But for now, I think this is um, all sorted until early next month.